Now, if you know me, you know that I'm a big iRacing fan, and I spend a lot of my time driving iRacing events and that sort of thing. And, um, one of the, the things that I actually started playing around with many years ago now, three years ago, in fact, was Assetto Corsa, Assetto Corsa Competizione, um, R Factor 2, a whole bunch of different sims, just to kind of play around and get a sense for what people were talking about when they were talking about it, all these different things that were alternatives to iRacing. So I abandoned a lot of that when I really started focusing on league and PCA sim racing, uh, CMS, um, all of the different leagues that I'm associated with all focused on iRacing and so I stopped kind of paying attention. And along the way, a lot of things had changed. Um, I had had actually some machine hardware failures, hard drive failures and things like that. So all of the work that I had put into developing a set of Corso um, and some of the other sims kind of flew away. I didn't retain it. Um, and some new interesting things have just started happening. Um, so Low Fuel Motorsports um, has started supporting R Factor 2 um, earlier this year. Um, now they're actually supporting Assetto Corsa, which is, um, uh, and also ACC has been a big, that's where they Low Fuel Motorsports started, um, was focusing on ACC. So of course, is new, um, and uh, the licensing requirements aren't as stringent because they're doing a lot of testing to support the servers, etc. Um, so I got curious. I got a relatively new machine, uh, faster hardware, better graphics capabilities, um, and I just wanted to see what the state of the art was with Assetto Corsa. And I started playing around, and I'll be really honest, I, in doing the playing around, I got kind of addicted became a really, really big problem in terms of a time suck because I would read this, that, and the other, all sorts of different tools, capabilities, etc. So what I wanted to do is I'm not going to go through the configuration and all the different stuff. Uh, I am going to drive the uh, 911 um, GT3 RS at um, in Tokyo. Uh, there's a Shotoko Revival Project that is absolutely amazing. It's a free roam. Um, it's got real traffic. Um, some really cool stuff. So what I want to do now is I'm just going to drive and have a little bit of fun. I'm going to turn my headlights on first here and uh, put it into gear. And I'm in the car park here. Going to get on the uh, freeway here. And I don't know why it's so alluring. I think it's mainly because it's different than other places that you can drive in real life or in sim. But I like this kind of thing. So first thing you're going to notice is that, you know, Assetto Corsa, uh, the simulator that's been around forever and is heavily modded a lot of uh, capabilities for people to write their own stuff including um, a lot of the stuff that I'm running here um, is uh, all developed by third-party developers that have patreon sites and they take uh, two dollars three dollars five dollars you can subscribe for a year but give you the opportunity to uh, contribute to them, thank them for their work, but the work is absolutely phenomenal, and it all kind of plugs into the the baseline Assetto Corsa, which is pretty remarkable. Also notice it's raining, um, and I've got all sorts of uh, cool light effects and filters and things that allow us to kind of see the world almost like it's real life. A truck almost pulled right into my lane. That was kind of crazy. Granted, I am speeding. But, uh... Some pretty amazing stuff. Just visually appealing. Um, it's not sucking up resources. It's not staggering, stuttering. I've got pretty decent frame rate. Um, again, granted, I am running on some pretty high-end hardware, but... The idea here is is that uh, this is actually pretty darn amazing, and uh, the one drawback to a set of course, at least as far as I have seen, is that the server setup is somewhat fiddly to actually uh, get uh, racing amongst humans actually working the way you would want it. Um, it's tough to get set up and isn't horribly reliable, and that's what Low Few Motorsports is actually working on: is trying to um, build a platform on which um, can have regular races decide which way I want to go here 
and uh, I think it's kind of cool. I actually I, I played around with some of the low fuel motorsports configurations, downloaded some of the stuff. There's like some real time penalty stuff that they have you download. Of course, uh, track maps and any other required mods um, that are necessary for. their uh, races of the week um, but just the the quality of the visualization the fact that rain is fully supported um, and it's impressive like you can see the the wind has an effect on how the raindrops are falling on the windshield here pretty pretty cool stuff and I'm actually pretty amused and amazed by the AI here in Damn it! Pretty amused by the uh, AI because they, they, I don't know how bad drivers are, but they're they make some really funky decisions, which is one of the criticisms of a set of Corsa too. If you're driving an AI, is the AI isn't always as reliable. I think on like race tracks, it's a little bit more um, manageable, but on streets, they don't quite do the right thing all the time. But it is enough to be fun. And, uh... That's what we're here for, after all. I've also been playing around with some other sims as well, as I mentioned. Uh, um... Okay. Who's gonna be the fastest turtle here? Um... Automobilista 2 is one of the most visually stunning sims, and I'll, I'll play a little bit around with that at some point, too. Um, it holds my attention a little bit less sometimes, but there are some really cool things uh, that you can do in there that are hard to do other places. Okay, I'm going to get a nice stretch here. Um, and they just had some recent improvements to their, whoa, daddy. That wasn't good. Um, but most of the racing that I've been enjoying that hasn't been iRacing lately has been here in Assetto Corsa. Um, the... One of the cool things is I have, I guess that it's important to kind of talk about the different kind of, uh, I guess, bents <laughs> that people can have uh, around a set of course. Uh, um, some love the free roam tracks. Like I, I actually, I find these very relaxing to just kind of come in and, and drive, have fun driving. Um, not really having a purpose, just driving around like you're driving on a real road but much faster and less sane than you would on a real road. Um, yeah, I think most of this, uh, it's uh, 60 kilometers per hour is the speed limit on uh, this freeway, but you can tell I'm exceeding that by a little bit. And uh, I don't condone that in real life, but in a sim, it's kind of fun to just sort of drive around and see what's what and enjoy the city at high pace. Um, Anyway, as I was saying, um, I said, of course, uh, it, it uh, is usable in a lot of different contexts. So the free roam aspect here. Um, there are people that um, like to race cars that you can't race in other things. And a lot of that includes historic race cars. Um, I just recently downloaded, as I was setting my, my system back up again, um, a whole bunch of historic race cars from the 60s. Now that's cool, um, including like a Shelby Daytona. I love the Shelby Daytona, it's so much fun to drive. Um, and uh, old tracks, specifically track configurations from that same time period, so the you know, mid to late 60s, um, when there weren't as many uh, concerns about speed. Um, or top speeds being, you know, way, way out of control. One of my favorite tracks is the uh, 1967 version of Watkins Glen. Um, and it's before the boot. 
um, before all that stuff. And, and it's just a tremendously fun track to drive with those older cars because you really do have to drive the cars. Uh, you know, so many of the like GT3s and, you know, modern cars, they drive themselves to a certain extent. They take a lot of the pressure off of the driver to be really precise with inputs. And uh, I mean, it's still there, but um, those old cars, the horsepower that they were slinging around was pretty incredible. And uh, a lot of fun to just th throw a car into a corner, you know, and uh, rip the rear wheels out, drive with the accelerator. It, it was, it's a whole different type of driving. Um, a lot more uh, visceral, I guess, is uh, the word I would look for there. Oops. I do have damage on, by the way. It's just I'm not doing anything that has actually ended the session um, or been so catastrophic that uh, it's damaged the car. I'm a little low on top speed here now. Anyway, I just wanted to do a quick video, share this uh, with you to kind of give you visually kind of the idea that sim racing isn't just one thing. Um, Random Call Sign is one of the streamers that I follow. He did what I consider to be one of the more brilliant videos of uh, recent era, talking about Simcade titles and why they're so important. And I really, I, I agreed with him. His, his premise was this, is that um, if you think about accessibility, um, most of the things that kind of tout themselves as real simulators um, are challenging to set up. They require a little bit of technical expertise or help from other people that have that technical expertise to get them configured right, get them tuned up right. Uh, a really good example, PCA Sim Racing, we now have the uh, uh, Entry League and the onboarding process is quite extensive, right? The, 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 not just um, the uh, attitudes and behaviors, the culture aspect of it that's important as well, but the technical aspects of the types of tools that you can use, that you should use, the things that you're responsible for on track, how to get your graphics set up just so. Um, all those things, it's overwhelming. It's a little bit intimidating. <clears throat> and if you look at uh, the Gran Turismo's, the uh, Forza's, the the more Simcade, the ones that a lot of, you know, real simulator drivers look down on, um, the reason why they are so useful is they provide easy accessibility to somebody with a console um, or somebody with lower horsepower compute cycles um, to get in and just start racing. Um, and uh, the menus and the, the, the ability to have a career mode and all of that stuff is conducive to someone stepping in and getting addicted to the racing culture, the car culture, the aspects that are actually arguably more important than out and out realistic or uh, uh, pure physics and th the other thing that random call sign kind of called out was that no matter how good a simulator thinks they are there's something in their physics model that's uniquely broken um, i racing i love driving i racing don't get me wrong but the physics in i racing are kind of wonky like there's no such thing as flat spots um, there's no rain there's um the tire physics change almost every build. Woo! That was dangerous. Um, <clears throat> so you have to kind of accept the fact that no piece of software is ever going to perfectly model the real world. And then you have to start thinking about why is it that we sim race? We sim race mostly because we love cars, we love speed, we love competition. And to a greater degree, 
or a lesser degree, you want that to be realistic. And the immersion aspect become, you know, comes into play. The more experienced you get, the better driver you become. But I, the, the argument is that things like Gran Turismo and Forza and some of those other things that are entry-level accessible constructs for people to come and get excited about racing, the skills that they learn in those Simcade titles um, are good enough to translate into more advanced Sims later. And that's why I think that when you say, oh my god, they're using Gran Turismo, or oh wow, Forza, you know, I, I can't believe you're playing that. Like, you know, that's a great place to start and a lot of fun and in and of itself can be an enjoyable thing, much like this. And, you know, Assetto Corsa, I'm not racing. I'm driving a fast car and having fun. Can I do that in real life? Absolutely. Can I do it in Tokyo? Well, probably if I had enough money and the wherewithal to travel to Tokyo and drive in Tokyo. But here I am. I'm driving a, a car that I don't own. It's a supercar, fun car, and I'm driving it in a place that I'm not likely to travel to anytime soon. And that's magic, right? It's not raising, it's not... Uh, I will say the physics in Assetto Corsa are absolutely amazing given how old this, this title is. Uh, the force feedback is absolutely amazing, um, and it's a lot of fun to drive. But again, kind of free form thinking here and talking about you know benefits. Random call sign got it right. Is that it's it's beneficial to be more inclusive, not less. Late making my decision there. So anyway, um, the whole point of this was to say um, that uh, every once in a while it is very rewarding to pop your head out of the sand, get out of kind of what you've gotten stuck into by virtue of what you've been doing the most. Um, and it can be extremely rewarding. Um, one of the things I was telling uh, um, the team that I race with most um, and you can take this as kind of the final thought on this is that no matter what sim I drive I always wind up learning something that translates back into something I'm more serious about um, and what I mean by that is uh, I was uh, prepping for a Daytona race nah and uh, I went into Automobilista 2 and started driving in Daytona um, in a 1974 Porsche 911 and uh, was having fun and it was just a goof but I figured something out about our rotation that gelled in my head and was able to translate that into better performance, better lap times um, by trying to occupy the same space, that's kind of funny um, but it gelled something in my mind that was at the edge of what I was getting close to in terms of enhancing my performance in iRacing. And driving another sim in a different car, same track, I figured something out that made me like a second, almost a second and a half faster a lap. Well, that's cool, right? And so those sorts of... Uh, opportunities to learn something new, something that you're not quite getting. Is, uh, pretty cool. I don't know. I'll leave you with that. Hey, uh, let me know what you're uh, thinking of, uh, this idea of uh, different sims and different driving and uh, if you're interested in seeing me kind of uh, share either um, my configuration, what I've done, my full experience in terms of what I've installed and what I've explored uh, driving. 
or if you just like the iRacing stuff and want me to stick with that, you know, just uh, give me a shout out in the comments. Let me know what you're thinking. Um, if you want uh, tutorials on how to configure stuff, I'm probably not the best guy um, in terms of uh, all the different uh, ways and things that you can install or should be installing. Um, for your Assetto Corsa or your uh, ACC or R Factor 2, etc. Um, but I can tell you what I've done. Um, that might be useful. But more importantly, uh, if you're interested in alternate content, kind of seeing me drive against uh, um, maybe in some of the low fuel motorsports stuff or against the AI drivers, uh, you. Against the AI drivers and the different sims. Um, I'm happy to do that. I had actually thought something that might be interesting uh, to some is to actually do some um, same car, same track comparisons um, of some of the different sims. Might be fun. Um, let's see, maybe get some apples to apples comparison of capabilities and uh, what they look like, what they feel like. Because um, there are, you know, five or six of them now that are kind of. Ah, yeah, pushed my luck. Let me know what you think. And uh, be safe out there. Thanks.